But first, former President Donald Trump and members of his campaign were part of a, quote, criminal conspiracy to defraud the United States. That charge from a new court filing from the January 6th Select Committee. The filing centers around Trump ally John Eastman, the conservative lawyer, who wrote several memos arguing that then-Vice President Mike Pence could overturn the election results. The legal brief signifies the most direct line the committee has uh, in terms of trying to draw the lines between Trump, his allies, and potential criminal activity surrounding the 2020 election. The select committee previously subpoenaed Eastman for documents, but he claimed attorney-client privilege. The new filing asks for the court to review the disputed materials. The committee chair and vice chair released a statement yesterday that reads in part, quote, the facts we've gathered strongly suggests that Dr. Eastman's emails may show that he helped Donald Trump advance a corrupt scheme to obstruct the counting of electoral college ballots and a conspiracy to impede the transfer of power. Neither former President Trump or John Eastman have been charged with any crime. Eastman's attorneys said last night that Eastman has a responsibility to protect client confidences and will respond in due course. A spokesperson for Trump did not immediately respond to request for comment. George Conway is still with us. What is the significance of this filing, George, and will these uh, documents ever see the light of day? Well, I, I, it's a highly significant fu uh, uh, filing. The, the, but what happened here was Eastman is making the argument that, that these documents should be produced because of attorney-client privilege. And for a lot of reasons, he wasn't an attorney, and a lot of boring reasons I won't get into. But the judge asked the, another question, apparently. The judge asked, well, what about the crime-fraud exception to the attorney-client privilege? And the question is, even if the guy's an attorney, he was, was he being used to commit a fraud? And, and that was a good question. And the, and the January 6th committee says, yes, well, we actually have evidence of that. And here's our brief. And they laid it out. The, the possible criminal offenses that, that Donald Trump and, and, and Eastman and others committed. And the focus is, is rightly and justly on 18 U.S.C., United States Code 371, which prohibits frauds, conspiracies to defraud the United States. And the language in that statutory provision is extremely broad. It says defraud the United States for in any manner for any purpose. And what that means is it doesn't just have to involve money. And when you think about it, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, if a president of the United States or anybody defrauded the U.S. government of a billion dollars, they'd go to jail. They'd be prosecuted. If they, if they did it, even for a million dollars, they'd go to jail. They'd be prosecuted. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this is a lot worse than that because, you know, the government wouldn't miss a million dollars, wouldn't miss a, probably wouldn't miss a billion dollars. But what Donald Trump and his people, his minions, tried to steal here was our democracy, our very ability to engage in self-governance. And there's a, you know, 1930s case by Chief Justice Taft that basically says that, you know, all, all you have to do is to conspire by fraud and deceit to obstruct a, le a legitimate function of government. And that's exactly what right. they were trying to do here. So, George, as you say, attorney-client privilege goes out the window if in the course of talking to your client you are committing a crime, and that's what they're hoping to let the court know here. Um, obviously, this January 6th committee continues, at work, continues its work. It has no ability to initiate criminal prosecutions, of course, but does this new information tell you that at some point along the way, this laundry list of witnesses, this laundry list of participants that the January 6th committee is looking at may face criminal charges? Yes, because what what's the you know th this statute it says what it says, but the, the 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 problem for Trump and Eastman and others and Eastman uh, have, have had to plead the fifth 146 times at his deposition before the January 6th committee. The problem for them is that the evidence is piling up and mounting, and it fits these statutes like a glove. I mean, the the real issue is. Were they intending to deceive anybody? Were, did, they, did they know they were deceiving people? Well, the brief goes through all the different ways that Donald Trump had to have known 
and Mikey and, and, and Eastman ha had to have known that that he was he was committing a fraud. He was told by the Department of Homeland Security, by the by the cybersecurity agency that there was no fraud. He was told by the Justice Department repeatedly by his own attorney general, Bill Barr, and then, and then repeatedly by the, the, the person who succeeded Barr as acting attorney general, uh, um, uh, Rosen, and by Donahue, the acting deputy attorney general. Over and over again, there was no basis to overturn the election. He was told it by the White House counsel. He was told it by, he was told that by his own uh, campaign aides. There was a campaign memo that said it. Jason Miller apparently is, it testified before the January 6th committee and said he told President Trump that, that you know, there was no there there. He, Raffensperger, the Secretary of State of Georgia, Trump had a conversation with him and, and Raffensperger explained, there's no basis for us to find you 11,000 votes. Over and over. And, and that doesn't even include all of the There's going to be more evidence. There's already, you know, reporting out there that Trump was telling his aides, and I know for a fact this to be true, that he was saying, how could I have lost to this guy? How could I have lost? Which means he knew he lost, which means he knew he was engaging in a fraud and knew he was engaging in a deceit. And the fact that he was trying to obstruct the lawful function of the United States government puts this squarely, squarely uh, uh, under, under, the, under the scope of 18 U.S.C. Section 371. And I, I just, at this right. point, I just don't see how um, the Justice Department um, can pass on this. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.